Hello, I'm Beth Wagner, physical therapist. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to choose the best walker for your specific needs. I'll be comparing front wheeled walker with a rollator. Key factors to consider include how much support is needed, where it will be used, and how much space is available. A front wheeled walker provides more stable support, but slower mobility because of drag on the back tips. A rollator, also known as a four-wheeled walker, provides less stable support because all four wheels allow it to roll. However, the rollator is faster, easier to walk with, and easier to negotiate tight turns and to fit through tight spaces. Rollators also come with more accessories and more features, including a seat to take rest breaks and a storage space. A rollator is better for longer distances and multi-use, such as carrying items. When choosing between a rollator and a front-wheeled walker, it's important to consider the size of the device and the size of the spaces where you'll be using it. When borrowing a device, it can be very helpful to measure the space between the wheels of the front of both rollator and the front-wheeled walker as well as the space behind the back wheels or the back posts on the front wheeled walker. Compare that to the spaces where you'll be using the device in your home. And when purchasing a device, typically the measurements are included in the listing. So, so be sure to check that and compare it to where you'll be using the device. Another important component to the size is the weight limit. Standard walkers, both rollators and front wheel walkers, typically have a max limit of 300 to 350 pounds. Heavy duty or bariatric versions typically have a max weight limit up to 500 pounds. They're also typically wider, larger, and heavier. But it's important to make sure that you choose the device appropriate for the weight of the individual using it. And the weight rating is typically listed right on the device, somewhere on one of the stickers that come on the device. When borrowing a piece of equipment, be sure to check the weight rating. When purchasing a piece of equipment, the listing will include the max weight rating. Now I'll show you a couple key features of the front wheel walkers and the rollator, including various accessories that can make this device best fit you. Let's start with the front wheeled walker. I have two designs here that are very similar, but they have some key differences. This front wheeled walker, you'll notice just has the tips in the back. When I try to roll this forward, it rolls okay. It does not back up well. It gets stuck on the carpet. And I'll show you a couple of accessories that can help a lot with that when we look at the next walker. What I like about this walker is the release. The, this walker has a trigger release underneath the side hand grips. So to fold this walker, I, all I need to do is press down on the trigger and fold it. It's very handy. To unfold the walker, I simply pull open on the, the hand grips on the side. Now let's compare that to the other walker. On the plus side, this walker has ski glides on the back. Now I can roll this forward and slide it back with greater ease. The ski glides help mobility by decreasing the friction on the back legs. The ski glides can be used on carpet or any firm surface, any hard surface. When using ski glides on hard surface, such as hardwood floors, it is possible to scratch the surface. An additional accessory that's very helpful to prevent this issue is a ski glide cover. Ski glide covers can be purchased as a package alone or as a combination with the ski glide tips. And these ski glide covers work by just sliding over the top of the ski glide and tucking in on the back. And this can be done while the ski glide is already on the walker, which makes it great for changing out. These are very helpful to use indoors on hardwood surfaces like tile, laminate, or hardwood. I wouldn't recommend using these outdoors because the fabric can wear out and become ripped very easily. These are a great option for indoors. 
The downside of this style walker, in my professional opinion, are these push button releases on the front. Because it's metal to metal, these releases frequently can become jammed, rusty, and generally don't hold up or work as well compared to the trigger releases. To release this, it's also a bit more awkward. I typically find that I have to stand with my leg next to the, the side upright. I have to press the button and then use my leg to actually close the walker and then press the button and use my hand or my leg to close the other side of the walker. Opening it is the same as with the trigger releases. Most walkers come with the push button releases. However, if I had a choice between a push button release and a trigger release, I would definitely choose the trigger release. Now moving on to the key features and accessories of the Rollator. As I mentioned, the key benefit to the Rollator is the ease of mobility. The downside is also that it rolls so easily. It can get away from the person and end up pulling an individual forward. Now the addition of the brakes help to improve the safety and to counterbalance that ease of roll. So in the case of a downhill or a slight loss of balance, application of the brakes will slow or stop the roll of the wheels. The brakes can be applied both as a trigger function, meaning pulling in to apply the brakes, and then simply releasing to release the brakes. The brakes can also act as a parking brake by pressing down and then removing your hands. Now the, the rollator is locked. Application of the brakes is very important when the walker is going to be used as a seat during a rest break. Now moving on to the seat and the storage under the seat. Choose the proper size and style of the seat depending on the size of your body, your height and your weight, as well as how you're going to be using the device. If you plan on using the Rollator for longer distances and you want a seat to take long rest breaks, then you really want a comfortable wide seat. If you're mostly going to be using the Rollator as a walking device, then the seat isn't so important. So I would suggest choosing a smaller, lighter, more compact seat. And every Rollator that I've seen has storage underneath the seat. So you flip up the seat and there's a bag here. Again, the size, configuration, and style of the bag varies greatly from device to device. So depending on how much you're going to be using the storage, you may choose a smaller or larger bag. Another feature that varies greatly on rollators is this back support. When sitting, some rollators just have a foam bar here and some have a wider back support, uh, almost looks like a back brace. Again, depending on how much you think you'll be using the seat, you could choose a different style uh, back support. Many other, many other accessories are available for both front wheeled walkers and rollators. Different styles of trays, different kinds of carrying bags that can be placed on different parts of the walker. And finally, when choosing between front wheeled walker or a rollator, consider ease of use and travel. Depending on your needs, the, the ease and lightweight nature of a front wheeled walker might be preferable. The front wheel walker is also easier to store and easier to get in and out of a vehicle. Now the ease of folding and fitting a rollator into a vehicle varies greatly from device to device. This particular device folds by lifting up on these support beams here and it simply folds in half and then the seat flips up. Now the downside of this is that it also can unfold very easily on its own. The seat flips down on its own. There isn't much to keep this device in the folded position unless you add bungee cords, tape, or something else. So if you plan on putting your walker in and out of the car, be sure that you check the folding capacity. If you're purchasing a device online, check out the reviews. Oftentimes people will comment on the ease of getting the device in and out of a car. If you'd like further information on how to properly adjust the height of a walker and how to safely walk with a walker, click on the link in the description below for my follow-up video 
where I cover fit and walking with a walker in greater detail. I hope you found this video helpful to choose the best walker for your needs. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Leave any questions or comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I am able. Have a fantastic day.